Hello and welcome everyone in another episode of Researcher Celebrity. Today we have Dr. Priyanka Sharma with us. A brief of Dr. Priyanka is she has done her integrated master's at University of Mysore in Molecular Biology, following which she pursued uh, her PhD at Institute of Advanced Study in Science and Technology, in short IASST, India, following which she uh, availed some nationally renowned fellowships awarded for postdoctoral research in India, which are DBTRA and National Postdoctoral Fellowship, for which she worked in ICGEV. And then she moved to Cardiff as a research associate. And then presently, she is postdoctoral research associate at Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine, LSTM, for the people who works in uh, vector biology and all that stuff. So with this brief, uh, thank you very much and welcome Dr. Priyanka at the platform. Thank you so much for having me here. It's a pleasure to be a part of the researcher celebrities here with all of you. Nice. So uh, Priyanka, we always start our conversation with having how and when you decided that you wanted to be a researcher. Uh, so it was like uh, my dad. So my dad, he is into science and then he has always like showed me this dream of being in science always. And then uh, it was like from a very young age that I don't even remember when he always showed me microscopes, living creatures and everything. And uh, I was like, quite that was like quite exciting for me. And also in my house, we have a lot of books which are like related to diseases and stuff like that. So I was always very much interested in those books. And I always thought like, uh, why not? I am the person who is working towards, you know, uh, maybe discovering medicines for this, uh, like uh, different kinds of infectious diseases. And also my grandfather, he was a traditional healer. So, you know, people from different parts of India used to come to him to take some herbal medicines, which used to provide for arthritis. So I think uh, looking at all of this, I just started developing that passion for research. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that is, uh, yeah, I can say that that is like a turning point for me. So the research lies in the roots, if we can say that. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yes. So when you were pursuing your schooling, yeah, was there any thought that you will do a PhD sometime or you just wanted to uh, pursue research independently? Oh, so like uh, even like very early during my school days, I had decided that I want to be in science. I, I never thought that uh, like, you know, I'll go into engineering or something like that. I was very determined that I want to do research and that to research in search of noble antibiotics. I was very sure about it that I want to like make this society like disease free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was my passion. And then I started working towards it like uh, since I joined, then I went to give my national entrance in my so university where I cleared it. And then my journey in molecular biology also has been quite exciting. Mm -hmm. I met different professors who were also researchers from CFTRI Mysore. And then we discussed things. I got to know like more about research I went deep into it so and then yeah here I am today like doing research in one of the best institutes I would say in the world absolutely and no one can question uh, LSTM absolutely yeah. in terms of uh, tropical medicine so that's right after your uh, master's did you take any time to decide that you will uh, do a PhD in India or you want to do a PhD of, like abroad uh, so like actually uh, my main uh, important thing was like I wanted to do a PhD in drug discovery. Mm -hmm. So that was my main motive. So I did not care much about like doing in India or like doing abroad. Uh, so like uh, because I also wanted to explore the field in India as well. Mm -hmm. So before uh, like in, during my master's I have done a dissertation but then I was not uh, doing like hardcore research in uh, drug discovery. So that is when I joined IASST. So IASST is a DST institute uh, by the government of India. So I just cleared the entrance there. And then my PI was quite new at the time. And uh, when I joined the lab, 
yeah it was like quite exciting for me when i got to know like i uh, like we discussed uh, he gave me a few topics and then he's like you're free to choose because i was his first phd student mm -hmm. so i was free to choose my topic and then that was like otherwise like most of the students in india they don't get to choose their topic <laughs> as far as i know but then like i had that independence and then i told my pi like you know i want to work on this field like where i am uh, working on drug discovery against human infectious diseases mm -hmm. so that was uh, that was like quite exciting like we had so many different discussions uh, within the institute and also outside the institute and I started my work there. So I did not think about like uh, where particular institute I should go. But yeah, my main concern was I want to work in drug discovery field. So the focus so, area was predefined and yeah, you it was just predefined. worked towards it. So yes. now you started the conversation of uh, initiating the PhD and joining the lab. We all know that it is a very critical journey in every researcher's life. Yeah. If you can share that journey of your PhD, how that went? Uh, so my, uh, you, uh, do you mean like a journey of the drug discovery yes. thing? Yes. Yeah. So the like since I was my uh, uh, supervisor's first PhD student, so it was like, I would say it was exciting also. And in a way it was challenging also because the lab was just established. And uh, it was like only me who joined the lab at that time. And I think uh, like a few months after I joined, like new students came in. But that journey was quite challenging, I would say, because, you know, right from establishing the lab, like ordering the chemicals, ordering even the microorganisms from the uh, MTCC culture and everything like, yeah, that I had done it myself. And uh, yeah, so many things. And then when I saw my friends, like they are working, but then here I am like working towards establishing the lab. So I was like, oh my God, when am I going to finish my PhD? But uh, yeah, so that was like quite a challenging task, but then it was exciting also because I had the freedom. I am also learning how to do, uh, and I'm like quite, uh, I always love taking challenges. So I'm like, okay, let me do it nicely. So yeah, I worked like, I worked day and night, I would say. Mm -hmm. And then I finished my PhD within four years. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, yeah, within four years, I was, uh, I had already completed my Viva and everything. And before, like, you know, I completed my Viva, I had already awarded, I was already awarded the DBTRA. Mm -hmm. So even in DBTRA, like I worked, uh, I had written my project where I wanted to work on malaria because mm -hmm. I uh, because why malaria? Because malaria is uh, one of the diseases which are quite uh, prevalent in northeast India, mm -hmm. and since I come from the northeastern part of India, I'm from Assam, so I wanted to like go deep into it. So I worked on malaria for quite uh, yeah for some time, and then again I shifted from DBTRA to NPTF, mm -hmm. uh, where I worked at ICGV. So yeah, it just things just like I had just planned and things just happened because I worked towards it. So if I may ask that settling in the lab where you are the one who are ordering everything and starting it from scratch for your PhD and now settling as a postdoc in yeah. another uh, part of in like, you know, country, uh, no, not country, on the world. world. So you have to just travel abroad and then with the climate change, with the social uh, social mm. differences, how uh, well is the settling going on? So the settling has been going on quite well. And yeah, one more thing I would like to mention, like, you know, during my PhD, uh, I was, uh, I worked on the isolation of antimicrobial metabolites from actinomycetes. And those actinomycetes I had isolated from different forest ecosystems of Assam. So Assam is a part of the Indo-Burma mega biodiversity hotspot. So I went to different forests of Assam, isolated the soil or the water, uh, like maybe the lake region. And then like we, I, I, uh, I had isolated actinomycetes, screened them for the production of different antimicrobials against uh, drug resistant pathogens as well. Mm -hmm. And then like, uh, like, as I said, like, my lab was just established like we just had the room and everything 
and I was the first one to fi uh, find a novel antibiotic, which is a phenolic compound. So I reported that compound for the first time during my PhD. Mm -hmm. And I was also successful in, uh, you know, reporting for novel actinomycetes during mm -hmm. my PhD. So which I feel is like quite nice. <laughs> so absolutely. If you are doing something novel, you should be uh, very happy about it, obviously. Yeah. So yeah. when, uh, so... Everyone knows that celebration comes after very hard work. Yes. You started from scratch building your lab. And yeah. this is for all the viewers that not many of the students have this exposure that when they join a lab and the lab is in not even in very initial phase because at that time the PI is just settling in. You are the first uh, PhD student. So then you have to order things for or to build the lab as in... Yeah. Uh, the uh, whatever it's not just about chemicals sometimes it's about you have to make the list for the equipments you want the configurations and this is the part which most of the people lacks in a way because whenever they moved into an established laboratory everything is there so right. either they don't know the configuration of the system or the process what they have go to go through and mm -hmm. in India this is something which is very important for every researcher. So whatever equipment you are using, you should be knowing the details of it, not only the purpose, because obviously you know the purpose, how to use it for what you use it, because you are using it all day and night. But these are the tiny details which helps you in a big way, not only when you are doing PhD, but when in future you are going to have your own laboratory setup, this also trains you for your future, because these are the things which are very crucial and sometimes the researchers who comes from a very established lab now have to start their things. And that's the time when they feel this struggle that they don't know anything about looking for equipments or you know how to order the process. It differs from institute to institute, but it is always a good uh, knowledge to have it. So that's right. when you got that knowledge, mm -hmm. What was the use of that in your uh, career, like, apart from uh, that? Yeah, so uh, when I already learned that establishing labs and then ordering chemicals and stuff like that, so when I joined ICGB, because ICGB, that was my own project where I was the PI of my project. Mm -hmm. So it became quite easy for me. Like, I knew what I wanted from where I wanted, how to checklist the things like instruments or chemicals and everything. So that became quite easy for me. Again, like uh, uh, one more challenge, yeah, one more challenge that I faced in ICGB, not exactly ICGB, it was like for my project. Like again, for my project, uh, like uh, for my uh, NPDF and DBTRA, my project proposal was on uh, isolation of novel uh, antimalarials against plasmodium falciferum uh, from endophytes and endophytes are those bacteria which are present inside the plants mm -hmm. that are not on the surface or something like inside the plant leaf or root or something like that and also from the soil even for that now my project was like I had to go to different forests of northeast India previously mm -hmm. during my PhD it was just a sum so mm -hmm. for this I had selected like different forests of northeast India now the main challenge was uh, I had to take permission from mm -hmm. the government of India and that too from MOE, Ministry of Forest and uh, Environment. Mm -hmm. I Yeah, so I was like, I don't even know how to do it. And then I went to Delhi for the first time. Mm -hmm. I did not know I had to take appointment for the from the ministers or their secretaries. I mm -hmm. just went and I'm like, I need that. And I'm like, I, I have just come from a Sam. So, you know, I, I worked really hard to get into MOEF mm -hmm. and then get all the things done. So mm -hmm. it took me like two to three days, mm -hmm. which was like quite challenging because I come from Northeast India. Like I don't know much about Delhi then. So mm -hmm. before starting my project, I have to, my project was already granted, but then like I did not have the permission to collect, collect the uh, samples. Mm -hmm. So that was again a part of challenge. So, which I accepted. I am like, since I want to work on it, so let me challenge. So, yeah, that was again, like I had uh, visited like Tripura, Arunachal Pradesh, and also like different uh, forest of Assam also. 
-hmm. and then I started my work which took me around like two three months I guess initially mm -hmm. uh, to settle down and everything mm -hmm. but after that yeah once I started doing it went quite well <laughs> great so this is something which uh, we always talk about that researchers doing things in lab is the easiest part but going exactly and especially you brought this uh new view of like taking the logistics into consideration because when you are going out you need certain uh, approvals and then you need specific logistics to get the samples from uh, you know forest to the lab so which yeah. was the part which you enjoyed the most was it in the field or in the lab actually it was in the field because mm -hmm. in the field uh, the thing was like i had to pre decide like from where am i going to collect samples mm -hmm. because if i don't collect good samples i am not being able to isolate uh, new actinomycetes i won't be getting new antimalarials mm -hmm. so i you know i had like i always whenever i visited any forest i was that was always in my mind what if it's raining if it's raining then the soil is little you know muddy what if i don't get actinomycetes or what if i get more so you know there is always a constant question and answer going on in my mind like uh, even if i'm collecting medicinal plants should i collect the whole plant suppose it's, if it's a small plant should i collect the whole plant or should i collect just a part of the root because you know i don't want even to hamper the ecosystem as well okay. So, yeah, like if, if it is a big tree and then, you know, I'm just taking out the root of it. So that might disturb the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So that has to be done very, very carefully. So all these things, yeah, were quite exciting. Uh, and in few of them, you know, my parents accompanied me uh, like to different forests. So I, I, my mom and dad, I told them like, why don't you just come with me? So, you know, they had the uh, whole packet and I was the person who used that, what do you say that uh, uh, we, uh, you know, the one we use for collecting samples, soil mm -hmm. and all. So I was the one like collecting them. And then I also uh, had to provide a report. Yes. And in that report, like uh, we had to give proof that I went myself to collect samples from the forest. Mm -hmm. So my parents were there taking my photos that, yeah, she is doing this. <laughs> So, yeah, like uh, I, I really enjoy like going to different forests, speaking to people, mm -hmm. you know, speaking to the high level managers and everything that I want to do this. I also had to defend my project to each one of them, like why I am doing this. I'm doing this for the benefit of the society and everything. And once it reaches the lab, the things are like fast. So, okay. yeah. So now this brings us to our next question of communications among researchers. Because when you are explaining your research to your peers, it is very fairly easy, if not very right. Easy. But how it went when you were talking to people in forest and who are not in any managerial position, who might not even know what uh, you're talking about, science or malaria, because they might have an idea of fever. But when you are talking about plasmodium falciparum and anti malarials, how no, work? they won't have. Yeah, so yeah, that was like, again, uh, quite a bit of challenge, I would say, because sometimes they are like, what you are doing, like, you will be collecting soil, and then you are telling that you will from the soil, you are bringing out the antibiotic, I like it took me quite a while to make them understand that not from the soil it is from the soil that i'll be isolating the bacteria. And many people they don't even know, like, if I say them just bacteria, like not all common men, they know what is a bacteria. So mm -hmm. I should tell them like germs or something like that, you know, those co-words. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and then from there, I'm like, from those germs, I'm taking out this antibiotic. And they're like, germs can produce antibiotic. So, you know, yeah. So step by step, when I try to explain to them, and sometimes I show like photos, mm -hmm. uh, I'm like, see, like, this is what I had done during my PhD or you know, during my PhD, I said, like, this is what researchers do. So I am doing something like that. And then, like, I can take out a medicine that will be very be beneficial for malaria. And then people are like, oh, okay, you know, she is doing some stuff. She is doing science. Like, mm -hmm. she's doing Vigyan. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is one of the things where most of the researchers struggle when they have to explain their research to a layman or in layman terms, because not all the even even if an engineer or economist 
who are educated but they just cannot understand uh, or not have that better understanding of uh, malaria of what your work is doing so when you were doing all of this having the family in there you know uh, enjoying the field work have they ever said that you should not do things like that ah uh, like no i haven't heard that because you know like since my main collection point was from northeast india mm -hmm. so in northeast india we don't have much of this gender bias thing mm -hmm. so bo both like males and females they are treated quite equally even in studies everywhere mm -hmm. so i have i won't say that i have faced that so no i i haven't faced that so and then sometimes they give me ideas because mm -hmm. generally in forest you know we have this because my uh, like mainly i targeted like national parks and wildlife sanctuaries mm -hmm. so mainly there will be wild animals there can be wild tigers or rhinos so mm -hmm. there was always a guard who accompanied me mm -hmm. so i was taken in a jeep and you know and the guard will be like wait madam i will come with you so he used to stand with his gun mm -hmm. and then i used to like collect samples and sometimes he used to give me ideas you know like oh this is the medicinal plant like because certain uh, you know suppose arunachal pradesh or tripura i do not know their regional names like the plant name of the uh, re, uh, like the plant names in their region mm -hmm. names mm -hmm. and then they used to tell me like why don't you take this like you know we make this medicine from that because you know even they have certain knowledge of this medicinal plants mm -hmm. and then that even even they a lot in all these things in my journey absolutely so which was yeah which was quite exciting and then sometimes you just speak to them and then you get to know so many different types of things <laughs> no i think one thing which came out very well here is like a scientist listening to the traditional people because yes. they have so much of rich knowledge in there what right. they are doing they might not know the active ingredient name what they are making but only they know that okay they take this part of this plant for this particular disease and that's how they prepare a, like you know remedy for it exactly but scientists listening to them yeah proving it with the experiments because in our days in science it is all about like what you have published and how impactful was that if you don't have right. an experiment <laughs> to back up your hypothesis it's just a hypothesis that's right so when you listen to them when you worked with that team how that research came out oh so yeah that came out like quite well because whatever they were saying i just tried to explain those things uh, at icgb during presentations i just uh, because i had taken photos and everything and i'm like you know in maybe arunachal pradesh or in tripura this is this plant is used or this part of the plant is used for this purpose and also like uh, i have to know the scientific name as well yes. so you know yeah so we had botanists who helped me to uh, identify those plants and then when i asked them and then when i searched in the internet like i found some reports i would not say like it is a research paper or something mm -hmm. but then i found some reports where the people have mentioned somewhere that you know this part of the plant is useful for this disease so yeah i was able to find like uh, quite a few very good anti malarials from that uh, from those uh, work so and then like also the most active compound which i got during my postdoc at icgb mm -hmm. so that had uh, you know the extract mm -hmm. it was more potent than chloroquine oh. so chloroquine yeah so chloroquine is we know that it is used against malaria it has mm -hmm. yeah it is the active ingredient but then like when i looked for the compound so it had a bit more effect or it was like more powerful than chloroquine mm -hmm. which i found was quite exciting but then like you know at the last part of my project like covid hit in mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so i had done animal experiments in that but i wish i could have got some more time to finish it yeah, so covid has yeah. impacted not only the research <laughs> human life as yeah. like anything else so yeah yeah this is uh, now for all the viewers and audience for all the passionate young researchers who think that what we do in laboratory is the only research what dr priyanka just mentioned here that if you are open 
to learn or to listen for the traditional knowledge which is there in India. It might be very helpful for you. What we need to do is just like perform the experiments. And as uh, Dr. Priyanka just mentioned that you're, you might get better active ingredient than that, which might help you not only in getting patent and publication, but to serve the society in real time. And that is what all of us are working towards. Now people are talking about translational research. Whatever you do, how quick you can serve the society with. This is the idea with which Dr. Priyanka started her research career in a way because she always wanted to do uh, serve uh, the society and make the India disease free, as mm -hmm. she mentioned. So Dr. Priyanka now post PhD did uh, a research in India as postdoctoral fellow now at LSTM. How do you see uh, yourself as a researcher from your master's till now, how the researcher has evolved and what are the plans for the future? Uh, so as a researcher, like, you know, I have worked on different fields. So initially, like uh, during my PhD, I was working on a search of antimicrobials, like from the scratch, like I, from the soil and everything, and then testing it against different microbes. Then at uh, ICGB, I started working on antimalarials. Again, then, uh, yeah, before joining LSTM also, I was in Cardiff University where I worked on synthesized compounds against multidrug resistant strains. And yeah, at LSTM, at LSTM, I am working with the icon. Uh, I'm working with the icon project. So the full, like you know, if you ask me the full form of icon, icon is infection innovation consortia project. Mm -hmm. So it is within the antimicrobial chemotherapy and the resistance space. So mm -hmm. what I hear I am doing is uh, I'm uh, like you know microbes you know are present everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you like in the human skin, in water, like anywhere that you can think of, about. So what we do is here, we try, we isolate microbes from like maybe cupboard, from dustbin, from railings, from laptop screen, camera, human skin, from toilets, like anything that you can think of. So uh, here we are also, this is a citizen science project where some of the people from the UK, so they have contributed, they have contributed to different microbes, like, you know, from their house, from kitchen, mm -hmm. from sink. And then from those microbes, we try to uh, see which are the those microbes that are producing novel antimicrobials. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm working towards structure elucidation using different mass spec technologies. I'm also doing like whole genome sequencing and stuff like that for the identification of the microbes so this journey has been quite exciting and everywhere there is like a bit of challenge I'm learning more because you know if if I don't have that opportunity to grow I think I fail as a researcher mm -hmm. Absolutely. so I should always evolve I should always grow there should be always like new things I should always be curious like why is this happening what am I doing so yeah so this has been like quite exciting the whole journey like working with different different things and also in LSTM I'm also uh, involved in public engagements mm -hmm. where we uh, you know we go to surrounding schools or like uh, some public places and then we discuss uh, to people about antimicrobial resistance and stuff like that because uh, antimicrobial resistance is going everywhere. Yes. Like the more antibiotics we take, the more resistant we are making uh, the microbes within us. So yeah, I'm also involved in those things. So yeah, like bit by bit, the journey has been quite exciting. So now what do you uh, plan in future that, uh, okay, before that, let's take a step. Back. We talked about all the fantastic research happening here, okay? people helping you in there. Were there any times in your PhD or your postdoctoral research when you actually thought that it is taking very high toll on you and that you don't want to do it anymore? Oh, you mean like something like the mental health thing? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Actually, uh, the thing was like, yeah, I would, I would not say no. I would say yes during COVID. So during COVID, you know, one of my animal experiments, I had just set up an animal experiment. So my PhD was quite exciting. 
like i had a friend relationship with my supervisor so when i was in icgb and then like that was the last part of my project it was almost coming to an end i just had the animal experiment going on but then uh, the experiment had to go for 30 days i had just set up the essay it was some four or five days and then like there was lockdown i was not able to go to the lab and uh, you know, I was like really, really tensed at that time thinking like, because the my animal life is like, or any life is very precious. Yes. And then uh, I had taken so much permission to go, like do experiments with animals. And then these animals are going to go to a waste if I don't test them properly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was like, what to do that? I was really tensed at that time and I didn't know what to do whose help to take so but then luckily like my uh, uh my colleagues at icgb they were like quite helpful mm -hmm. and uh so when i spoke to them about like this is the thing and then they were staying within the campus so they helped me but i you know this stress was not because of my because of pi or my work or something it was like due, due to covid i would say <laughs> So, yeah. And then at Cardiff, at LSTM, no, I have never faced anything like that. Because, you know, the thing is, what I feel is, if someone is having any problem, I think the best way is to speak out. Yes. Speak out, speak to your colleagues, like ask them for help or sometimes mm. like if we work too much, sometimes we are like, you know, working day and night and day and night. And then sometimes it's like quite important to take a break. Maybe take a short break, go out on a trip, like go for a movie, go for a coffee with your friends, talk to yes. them. So that I think is like quite helpful for the researchers. No, so, I think now we are already in that uh, uh, mode of conversation and the phase in the conversation also, where we start asking about suggestions or, you know, guidelines or the word of yeah. wisdom, how we say that what you have to share already with this conversation we had in you know bits and pieces if we have to compile that that what are your suggestions for the people who are considering that they should do a phd or not for the people who are looking for postdoctoral opportunities who are either finishing or just recently finished their phd that mm -hmm. how should they do that and what are your recommendations for that so first thing is like, uh, since we are in science, so science is all about exploring and, you know, asking questions. So I would say like when you are into science, when you want to do a PhD, when you, whether you want to do a PhD after your master's or a postdoc after your PhD. So, you know, you should be quite clear about what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And then this curiousness is very important. So many people like, you know, they opt for a postdoc because they don't have a job after the PhD. Mm -hmm. or they opt for a PhD because after master's, they don't have a job. So this mm -hmm. is not like, you know, PhD or postdoc or research for that uh, thing is not an option. Mm -hmm. So research is like, is a passion. If you are not passionate about research, so I don't think so anyone should come into research. So mm -hmm. it's, it's what I would say is like, always stay curious and never stop asking why, like why I am doing this, what, what will be the benefit like, you know, contributing something towards the society. And Absolutely. also, I would say, like, uh, you know, the, it is always good to explore, like, uh, new ideas and approaches, even if it, it might seem challenging at the first place. But once you get into the problem with an open mind, it becomes, everything becomes quite easy. And, uh, yeah, you would want to uh, explore more. Nice. I think uh, what Dr. Priyanka just mentioned for all the viewers here, Passion, obviously, is the first thing which brings you to the research because there are not many perks in there. But the two things which you need more is the clarity that why you want to do that, yeah. which might come from the curiosity that you really want to explore something. But clarity is the C which you have to have when you commit yourself to the research. So all yeah. these three C before it's it it can start with curiosity leads to uh, clarity and that's when you commit so before committing just check your two c's if you have two in place third one research will never let you down and yeah this is something where okay so dr priyanka you also briefly mentioned this here mm -hmm. that how 
the research is benefited if you are doing it our recent uh, recently our uh, one of the researcher celebrity dr alak mannan he mm -hmm. has mentioned this thing and these co conversation with the researchers are even helping me a lot you know learning and all that i have never seen a researcher talking about that how research will be benefited if you will do it it's not how you will be benefited because obviously you will get publications patent and all that but how research in itself will be benefited if you are doing it and that's you also mentioned that it's just not your passion about it you have to be making sense of it you have to be very responsible as in this conversation you mentioned about not harming the plants if you have to take the route you have to be more innovative in a way that how you can disturb the plant the least and still get uh, what you want out of that that's right because the research is all about like taking responsibility about your work about yourself yes because every every time you won't have someone who is like monitoring you from above mm -hmm. yes so you are responsible for your own work and there are like small small things like you know this chemist uh, people from chemistry they would know better like whether to add you know water to acid or acid to water first so yes. yeah so you should be responsible in each step and uh, what i feel is research is all about passion absolutely yeah it was wonderful having you uh, dr priyanka at the platform and if you may allow that we can ask our viewers if they want or uh, you know more guidance or they want to ask you specifics if you with your permission we can share your details so that yeah sure people can ask you and for all the viewers if you want to be in touch with our researchers celebrities you can write it to us or to directly with them and we are here to help you if you have a hurdle you think you are stuck with we are here to give you wings so that you can fly on it that's what empowering science foundation believes in we believe in breaking the barrier so the only thing you need to have is a passion and then the rest is taken care of uh, with our researcher celebrities with empowering science foundation and researcher celebrities like dr priyanka sharma we actually celebrate research here what, yes. what you have seen today and what you have heard from dr priyanka is she is more passionate about research and she celebrates her research she doesn't want her to be called as celebrity it is us at empowering science foundation because we always believe in breaking the barrier so this is one barrier which we are breaking with our this series that let's celebrate researchers by calling them researchers celebrities so dr priyanka thank you very much for having this enlightening conversation with us and motivating so many young researchers around the world and thank you so much and i'm yes i'm always happy to help if anyone would like to connect to me or mm -hmm. like you know through empowering science foundation so i'm always there to help thank you very much and good luck for your future priyanka thank thank you so much thank you